Hello, Lisa. Hi, Alex. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Be Sober podcast. Well, oh, I suppose we've done the I'm Lisa, I'm Alex by saying hello, Lisa, <laughs> hi, Alex. I nearly was just going to go, well, I'm Alex. <laughs> I am oh, Alex. welcome, welcome, welcome. I like it when we get to talk on our podcast. Yeah, I like it when we get to talk on our podcast. I have had a really busy, busy, not in a complaining way. Oh, there we go. <laughs> no, honestly, a really good week. A really That's good, good a busy, good week. Yeah, yeah, like really productive. People can talk busy. about being busy if it's productive and good, but if you're whinging that you're busy, it's not all right. <laughs> For anyone who's just coming in today for the first time, you'll have to go all the way back to listen to everything to bring you up to speed. But one of the things that I do in my um, personal life is I play the church organ. Weird, I know, but I love it. I absolutely love it. Anyway, I have a lesson, and it's usually monthly, this lesson, by somebody from the College of Organists. He's highly skilled. Put out. Um... He's highly skilled. And I, the reason I have a lesson is because he helps me to play in the right style and he shows me nice tips and tricks for getting things right. Well, at the moment, and if you depending when you're listening, it's right, it's beginning of October right now. I've just started rehearsing for Christmas. And you know how much I'm gonna love this, right? He doesn't particularly, he's just doing his job. But two things. First of all, yesterday he told me that the music standard I am now playing is for a cathedral standard organist. <laughs> oh, that's incredible. Well done. That but is really good. It's not great, though. I'm so, I am playing it like a snail. But um, he also said that I am an incredible young woman. Now, how many compliments can you get in one sentence? <laughs> <laughs> that's so good. I love this. I know, I was really, really excited about it. And it's made me want to do more because, like, that validation, I've yeah. been living real with a lot. You know, because I talked to you about it, but I've had so much imposter syndrome over the last few months. And it's just lifted it. And I just feel like, yeah, I am. I am pretty incredible. I you was 44 what? when I picked the organ back up after 20 years. That takes some guts. It does take some guts to do something like that. And I think it's just such a unique talent. It's weird, isn't it? I love it. I, I love that you're a, a little organ player. <laughs> well, I'm not that little. Do you know one of our members on, um, I'm going to give her a little shout out, Catherine, on Be Fit in the Morning. She's a, she's a member, but she was telling me that she, she leads um, Rainbows, which is like Scouts oh, for yeah. Little Children. And they've just had their harvest festivals and they presented the organist yesterday in the church with his um, 92nd birthday or 92nd something. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And, and I was like, oh, my goodness, I'm half his age. Like, I could have another 46 years. I'm going to be amazing. <laughs> oh, you really, you already are amazing. God, harvest festivals. Yeah. I used to love, I, so I went to... Um, I don't, was it a Church of England school? I think, yeah, yeah it was C yeah. of E, <laughs> my primary school. <laughs> right, this is the godmother of my child uh, <laughs> who does so, really go to church. <laughs> <laughs> but we used to always go to the church down the road for harvest festivals yeah. and I loved it. But also I always really, really wanted to be able to sing. And it's kind of like, I don't know who I'm your friend because actually if I'd have known you at primary school, I think I'd have just been raging jealous because like at harvest festivals, when people used to get up and do solos and I'd be like, oh my God, I used to want to be able to do that. And you messaged me the other day, you're doing, a, are, you, are you singing a solo? Yeah, your yeah. Christmas yeah, well, it's a duet, solo. but yeah, there's a female solo and a male solo. So I guess it, you know, I'm not singing it alone, alone, but yeah, my part is on my own, yeah. Oh, that's so exciting. I listened to your full Christmas church album the other day. <laughs> <laughs> you're coming, aren't you, though? You're coming to the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm coming to the carol service. But I'm so excited about it. It's, and it's funny how different our lives are and the different things that we get excited <laughs> about. But we're, we're both doing, and, and this is really what we wanted to talk about today a little bit, is like how much shit you can get done when you don't drink. <laughs> oh my gosh, so much. I think 
I think when you're quite a long time sober, you don't realize how much you do get done. Like I think about it on a weekend sometimes, like the amount of stuff you can do on a Saturday. Yeah. Like sometimes you'll sit there on Saturday night and be like, oh my gosh, I've just like, I can't think of anything off the top of my head now, but do you know what I mean? There's just so many things. You can blitz your house, you can go for a walk, you can visit family members, you can phone somebody you've not spoke to for ages. You can get your paddle board out. You, you can go on a brunch with all like, your sober members yeah yeah on the last Saturday of every month go on and the events page still... on the website <laughs> <laughs> be soberofficial.com forward slash what's on <laughs> but you can do all of that you can catch up with work you can watch a film and I swear to god it'll be like five o'clock and you've done all of that I know it does feel like a mini holiday because do you remember at the beginning how long the weekends felt because you you and that, I guess, is a bit of an, an indication of how little you used to do when you were drinking because your day would be spent just recovering and feeling a little bit lethargic and not necessarily in a bad state, not hungover with a headache necessarily, but just not motivated, not moving, not doing. Yeah, just not, yeah, like you just unmotivated. I think, you know, when I used, to, when I first stopped drinking, so I ran a Saturday morning Slimming World group. And I remember when I first started that and everybody was like, you're not going to get anybody on a Saturday morning. And I used to think, you know what, I might not. Because in my head, everybody went out on a Friday night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I was like, to do an early Saturday morning group was really something out of my kind of, like I just didn't know people that got up on a Saturday morning to go to something like that. So when I started the group, I suppose that was my first insight into people that didn't always go out on a Friday night or drink on a Friday night. It's so weird because on a Sunday morning when I go to church, it's a 10 a.m. service. So I tend to get there about half nine, get myself ready and do a bit of playing before everybody settles down. And I've already done loads before I go. Now, that yeah. would have never, ever, ever would have been up and out of bed on a Sunday early. But, you know, I've already been downstairs. I might have had a little play on the organ. I've made breakfast. I've cooked for my son. I've had a shower I've been out with the dog I've done so much stuff and then I go to church and it's still not lunchtime it's crazy isn't it and like you said at the beginning I remember sitting there on a Saturday and it's not that I ever drank on a Saturday morning no. it's not even that I ever went out on a Friday night but the day just seemed so so long like I did not know what to do with myself because you'd go for a walk and then you'd come home and you'd be like right what now and then you'd tidy up or do it right what now and I think there's something really incredible about them first weeks that are long and you don't know what to do with yourself I think you've got to get bored sometimes to find out what you really enjoy or what makes you tick does that make sense like but do you know that boredom's like a real thing for creativity so like one of the things that people are worried about at the moment with and I don't know who these people are so I'm saying people really flippantly but I've seen it somewhere <laughs> but you know like people are worried about is the fact that everything's so readily available on phones for kids and young people and us as well that we can just distract ourselves. So like in the past, when you got bored on an evening, you might have read a book or you might have done a bit of knitting. I'm talking years and years and years ago, or you might have done whatever. But now when you get bored, you just pick your phone up and scroll through reels or scroll through yeah. social media. And that's how we're now treating our boredom. Boredom used to be about creativity, right? I'm bored, what should I do next? What what new life thing should I do? And I think sobriety gives you that. It brings back your creative edge because you do get bored in those early days. And it's normal. You get yeah, bored definitely. because you're not filling it with either having a drink or recovering from a hangover or planning your next night out or worrying about who's going to drive or worrying about a taxi or do where you to think stay. really you've been masking boredom with drink anyway yeah, you were drinking you're excited because about you were bored do you Absolutely. know what I mean I think I found you know I'm when I go on holiday now I can tell the times that I would have had a drink yeah yeah so I love like I can go away for three four days and feel like I've had a two week two holiday yeah. on it. And I really enjoy it. I love being able to do that. Plus you get yeah. loads of little breaks by doing that. But I can tell there'll be a certain point in most holidays. I think I'd have drank now. Yeah, because you sat there thinking what to do next and holidays are for slowing down and doing less. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's so weird, I'm more aware, it? but we've been masking our boredom. Like to go and sit in a pub for hours on end, yeah. right? I'm sorry, I don't care who you're with. Boring. 
And I love you, Alex. Me and you can talk and talk and talk. But me and you sat in a pub for hours on end. I'd get bored. I'd be like, right, I'm bored now. But we didn't used to. Well, no, because we masked it with drinks. Because we got drunk. We'd just get, yeah. yeah, we'd get drunk and then make an idiot of ourselves. And then the next day I'd be ringing you going, I hate myself. And, <laughs> and I'd be why, going, you didn't do anything Why did you wrong? let me do that? <laughs> why did you let me say that? Not only did I let you, I encouraged you. <laughs> But yeah, so it does, it masks a lot of it. It's so interesting, isn't it? It does, it does mask it. And it does sort of like, I think, yeah, obviously I'm going to say something really obvious now, but drink holds us back from exploring opportunity. I think that's the thing. Like there are many, many Saturdays I choose to sit and do nothing now to relax, to just sit and just be, but I'm comfortable doing it. And I think that's the thing. I'm still trying to learn that, you know. I am really, really still trying to learn to sit and be comfortable doing that. Like I'm I'm into a series at the moment. So I'm sitting for quite a few hours each evening because I'm binge watching something. But I, me being me, I'm binge watching. So I've got it done and out of the way because now I need to see what happens at the end. It's not because I'm enjoying sat relaxing does that make sense yeah yeah, it it is something that I really need to work on is sitting and relaxing and I'm the first to tell people that it's all right and that they can do it but I find it it. really really I think I I saw um I think it might have been that Scott Thomas you know and he did a video the other day and he was saying that he used to always be like the last one at the kitchen party and he realizes now it's because he was so afraid of himself that he didn't want to go back to himself. And when I was listening to it, I was like, oh my God, I think that was me. And in some ways, I think it still is. But also, I'm really anxious this week. So it might be just this week's thoughts. I might feel very different next week. <laughs> I I feel, I mean, Scott Thomas, weirdly, I saw him yesterday. He comes to my gym. <laughs> <laughs> he is so, and he loves his sober life, you know. Absolutely. Oh, you can tell it. he's such a good advocate for sobriety. His videos and is I love his family. I feel like I know his family. You know, when you watch them all, the, like fun, the brothers they? and the, the, the way and they the have the a music joke. Music and singing and they, they get all like the kids involved, don't they? Yeah. Like yeah. I saw he's, he's dead close with his niece and because you said about him coming in your gym, but my Beth saw him on an aeroplane going to oh, yeah, she did, didn't she? Portugal and she was on the back of his story yawning her head off looking absolutely knackered. It was so unflattering <laughs> and she got sent it all day off people like, is this you on Scott Thomas's story? That's funny. That's funny. Shall we... Um... Introduce our guest briefly. I'm not, we don't need to say too much because I think he's just got an amazing story to tell himself, hasn't he? Yeah. So he's called Simon Maguire. And all I'm going to say is, he's an Iron Man. Oh. oh. <laughs> Let's re- Hello, <laughs> Simon. <laughs> <laughs> he's an Iron Man. Yeah, he is. Um, so I'll get him to tell us about that when he comes in, or we will. So hopefully he's here and camera and mic are coming on. There we go. Hello, Simon. Hi, Alex and Lisa. How are you? Hi. Good, thank Good, you. Thank you. How are you? Good. Who am I? No, how, how are, are you? you? Oh, yeah. I thought you said who, who am are I? You? Um, yeah, who are yeah, you? I... What are you doing here? <laughs> Funny enough, I was just I was listening to your last week's podcast, and you said that sometimes people struggle to understand you. So oh, there the balls you go. and balls thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm good, thank you. I'm I'm really good. Excited to excited to be on the show, and yeah, um, no, all all good in my world. And us, so we've been like, we just had a little browse through your website as well and watched your YouTube video. Wow. Um, and it's just incredible. So I just want to say something on a personal level. I'm yeah. actually a PT in my in my other life. And I saw that. You, yeah, I read What your... you have done is amazing. Oh, thank you. It's incredible. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, absolute no, determination. Um... Well done to you. And I hope that doesn't sound as patronizing as it feels. No, well, the power <laughs> of. Uh... The power of getting your life in order, I guess. Yeah. Um, of which, of which, relationship with alcohol is probably the founding, uh, the big brick, isn't it? Just starts off a lot of a lot of other things. So yeah. Um, 
No, Can we it, talk about that, Simon? Yeah. Because yeah. honestly, we we have just watched it and we were both kind of mouth open watching it. Like it is incredible. You do and how you've got it into that like four minutes is really incredible as well. It's really inspiring. Um, oh, but you. one of the things that you'd said, because Alex just introduced you before you came on, then as like Iron Man. <laughs> He's an Iron Man. So really, is that something that you ever thought that you would be saying? And will you take us from the beginning to now where you can yeah. say that? Yeah, so it was never it was never something I, I thought I'd say. And 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 probably the reason I uh took on the there was kind of numerous reasons, but I guess the this the how it got planted in my head was probably in my pretty much in my worst shape I, I remember going for a walk with my brother and my brother's always kept in, in shape and 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 you know had a very different relationship with alcohol to to me and and he said one day I remember and I'm walking along and I'm I'm you know 22 stone in a bit and he said oh I might try one of these Iron Man things and I remember him telling me the distances and I just thought that's not even humanly possible and and me just thinking look at the shape I'm in and I, I sort of felt embarrassed about even having the conversation. And so that's how that that kind of thing was planted in my head. Uh, but, seed, um, if you like. Yeah. yeah. And and um, I still have a bit of a laugh with my brother because he's never done it. And, um, <laughs> oh. and, I, and, I, and I went on to do it. So, yeah, that, that's kind of wow. how, I, how, how I got onto, onto that. But, yeah, I suppose my, my relation, my relationship with alcohol started on the on completely the wrong foot um i lost i lost my mother sadly to to cancer as a as a teenager mm, and she hard. had so sorry yeah yeah she had she had a she had a quite a long battle with that it, it started as breast cancer and then and then brain cancer um and um really my alcohol literally started on the on the week that that she she passed away oh. um and it was a really good way of um, uh, disconnecting from from having to sit with those those feelings, and so really my relationship with alcohol as a as a fifteen year old then you know just it just continued and it and it, and it never really stopped. So you know every time I would drink, I, I noticed fairly on that I had a slightly different relationship to a lot of people that I that I hung out with. Uh, I would kind of drink to almost uh oblivion so you know regularly vomit regularly pass out you know it was it yeah. was it was it was pretty common practice and um then as I kind of got older and, and older most of my <laughs> friends started to be more responsible with those sorts of things and you know I met my wife and she could just have a glass of wine I was thinking how do you how do you do that um and I would I would always need to, you know, sometimes I'd I'd sneak in a bottle before we'd even start drinking and yeah. Um all of those 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 kind of things. So it 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 really kind of started started like that. Um and the weight problems, I think I never put two and two together. Um yeah. but actually in hindsight, uh, and hindsight's a, a, a beautiful thing, but those things really went hand in hand. Um, you know, bad drinking habits led to bad eating habits. Um, and really food and drink became the only way I, I dealt with stressful situations. Yeah. So I think, I think, you know, dealing with the loss of my mum, seeing that alcohol had that power to, to numb everything out. I then used alcohol to numb, you know, whether it's financial problems, relationship problems, um, you know, always putting things off to the next day. And I never took a break. You know, I, I, I was a consistent drinker, really, from a from a 15 year old. I never did a January. I, I, I might have taken two or three days off if I was if I was unwell or, or, or something like that. But I but I never, I guess, identified it as a major issue. And I and I probably didn't um well I didn't realize the impact it was having and I I certainly didn't blame my weight on on alcohol I blamed that on overeating and which I which I was um 
yeah so that, that that probably took me to the to the place i was as a as a 38 year old um 22 stone and and a bit more um and um i i also had a a, a problem by that stage because i was so heavy i, I had problems with my back um and i'd started taking painkillers and we saw, um, we saw that on the video and i mean that it, yeah. that's not uncommon is it to progress because of whatever reason yeah and i and i think it probably it probably started as that pain relief for the back then i realized that it had a good effect on a on a hangover so it was it was you know it it, it doubled up on that and then i realized that you know, stronger painkillers or codeine or, or 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 whatever also had a good the same effect as alcohol on on stress. So I'd start my day. I'd kind of wake up and 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 have a bit of sulpidine or or whatever that got rid of the hangover. It also made me kind of calm down a bit, I guess. Before I went into to work, I'd, I'd kind of take a few painkillers throughout the day. And then it's alcohol time, you know, would would arrive in the in the evenings. And um, uh, so, yeah, so that's kind of where I found myself. And, um, you know, I was I was pretty ashamed. I, it, it, it had started to affect a lot of different areas of my life. You know, mm. my relationship with my wife wasn't great. Um, I was, you know, hiding a lot of, I was certainly hiding the painkillers. Um, she started to notice that the pattern of my drinking wasn't, wasn't great. Um, and other people started to notice people at work. Um, you know, there was, people started to ask a few questions. Um, and so, and it, it was, I suppose a lot of people say to me, is it, is it one particular incident? And I, and I often think with that, it probably was one particular thing mm. that pushed me over the uh, over the edge, but it, it was certainly a, a, a build up of of lots of things. Um, and um, I was at, I was at work one day with a with a particularly bad hangover, and um, a colleague that I work with, I was in quite a senior position in a in a hotel group, and and I asked him to just pop out and grab me some some codeine. And he came back and he and he handed me the, the the packet and he and he me look you know um, I, I've kind of been noticing and if you if you carry on the way you are you're gonna you're gonna kill yourself and that just massively hit me that that day um, and I kind of, it, it it set really about a, a bit of chain reaction I tried to broach the subject with my wife before but I. I'm not great at those sorts of things, at, at kind of opening up about that. I'm supposed to be the kind of man of the house. I'm, yeah. I'm supposed to be, you know, two young kids at that stage, eight and four. Um, you know, I'm supposed to be in control of everything. And I felt very out of control of just every aspect of, of my life. Um, and so I, I wrote an email to her, which we we have a really good giggle about now. Um, I, I wrote an email to her, and in that email, I, I basically kind of fessed up. I I said, "Look, I know you know that I'm I'm having some 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 difficulties, but here they are, kind of in bullet point format." Um, and you know that was that was that was the right thing to do. How did um, you react? A really good idea yeah. to do yeah. that. To How, what was her reaction? Was it like, thank goodness now I know, or was it more shocked? Yeah. What was she like? Um, so I texted her after I'd sent the email and I texted her. Read and I your said, email. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly what I did. Um, and I thought this is this is gonna go one of two ways. Um it, it's gonna go, she'll she'll leave me, or um uh, she'll she'll hopefully help me and and she did she she helped me massively I you know got home and she gave me a huge hug and 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 you know I think admitting that was was a big relief to me I, I um we then kind of spoke to my dad and I admitted you know a lot to him um and th and that was a big relief as well they're kind of the two closest people in my in my life along with my children and and just opening up about about it to two people that I I trust 
was was a massive was a massive relief um and i no longer it, it no longer felt like a secret yeah i think that was quite important what a brave brave thing to do because i think you know I've re- I was really, I didn't want to speak then because I was so like kind of into your story there and feeling it for you. But from, from even being a teenager and then kind of having that knowing even then that you drank a little bit differently um, because we weren't really like that. We didn't know. I didn't know until after I'd stopped drinking that I drank differently, if that made sense. Yeah, because we were both yeah. doing it and yeah. enabling it. Yeah, and I think it's really interesting. And but even to like kind of still hold down a career, your wife, the kids, and the constant like when you said like you felt a bit of shame, and when people kind of start pointing it out to you, it kind of adds more shame, I think, and you end up in that cycle. So to get to that point where you've gone right and you've written it down, and what you've done there is you have asked for help with, yeah. and I just think it's such a brave thing to do, whether it's by an email or a t- and I know you said you laughed about it now, but it's so yeah. much easier to just write it down. And vulnerable, really it. vulnerable, yeah. like making yourself in that position where you're actually going, it's going to go one or two ways, you know, like she's either going to yeah. leave or going to help. So to put yourself in that position must have been really, really hard. Yeah, and I think, I think I, I probably didn't, I was so kind of fed up um of the of the cycle that i found myself in um and i seem to have had drifted so far away from the from the person that i wanted to to be and yeah you know and you've I, owned I, yeah. it as well haven't you there sorry by yeah. by writing that email and kind of asking for help you you've owned what's going on it's quite a pivotal moment I think and yeah a big up to the guy as well who, who was actually handed you the cording and said you know what you're going to kill yourself if this carries on because that's also a brave thing to say to somebody as well isn't it yeah his his name's Gary and uh Good on uh, you, Gary. Well done. Good on you, Gary. Yeah. <laughs> good always, on you, Gary. <laughs> we keep in touch. He's a he's he's a great guy. Um, That's good. Older really older good. chap, and I obviously needed his his wisdom at that point. Yeah. Um, and I think talking about kind of owning the 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 situation, I I'd got into this pattern, particularly the last four or five years. I my career had started really well, and then it, and then it had really kind of petered out the last three or four years I'd become quite ineffective at work uh maybe you know maybe I was he frozen there was a bit yeah. too big for me or, or whatever I, oh sorry um right. can you hear me now okay. yeah you're back you're back yeah um I'll just move a little bit um <laughs> yeah maybe maybe the job had got a big t- a bit too big for me or or whatever it was Oh, I think there's some I sorry, think, this signal issues. Um, I think. Those kind of last. Okay. Don't worry, um, it's it's I'm fine. Don't worry, it might be me. Yeah. Yeah, don't worry, it'll come back. It it usually does. <laughs> <laughs> okay. If it gets bad, just let me know and I can move again. Okay. Okay. You're back. Uh, you're okay. <laughs> yeah, you're all right. Okay. If it doesn't okay. for a long time, we'll pause it next time. <laughs> okay. Okay. Cool. Um, so I think I think I I become quite ineffective at work. My my career had had kind of stumbled, if you like, and rather than own that, I just blamed people constantly. I I started to blame a lot of people. I, I started to become very negative. Um, and actually, I think that point of writing that email was the first time I kind of thought, okay, this is this is my. I, I know I'm sharing it with someone, but it was the first time I probably said this is my responsibility now yeah. um and and that's quite a powerful moment um for, and I for loved me. what you said in your video of I got myself here I can get myself back um or out of it however you yeah. worded that and I loved that and I think often you're so right we go oh well my job's stressful or oh well even oh well that food tastes nice or oh well I can't be bothered going to the gym all of whatever it is all of those things we're very easy very quick to point out that it's life just life happening but 
Yeah. It doesn't have to happen around you, does it? You can take back. I mean, obviously, there's events in life, as you found out as a young teenager, there's events in life that we can never control that are going to happen and they're incredibly traumatizing and disruptive to life. But you can own how you respond. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And and that that was a bit that was a big turning point for me. Um and I and I think I it's not that I hadn't tried before to make changes. I I you know I had I tried and 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 failed. But this time round I I because I'd kind of fessed up and because I'd um talked to people about it, I I I felt more committed. Um because I had some accountability mm. to to the people around me. And I and I also kind of went about it a, a, a slightly different way, perhaps. And and I always say to people, because you know, once you get into the the sobriety world, you know, people are very curious a, a, about it. And I think the you know, um, it's okay to fail. That's 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 the other thing. It's it's okay, you know, if you do a month here and then mess up or or whatever. It's it's not really messing up. It's just it's just learning. And I think sometimes we put a lot of pressure on ourselves, particularly in in kind of sobriety that, you know, I have to be perfect. I, 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 I have to stick to this. And, and, it, and that and that puts a lot of pressure on. And then what that does is then when you fail or you slip up, you're really cross with yourself and, and angry with yourself. But, you know, you're fighting against against multi-million pound marketing budgets <laughs> here with a, a highly addictive substance like. Yeah you know if you make it a few days you've done brilliantly so it's you know I, I think I learned every time I, I I failed but this time I managed to I managed to make it stick and many years as well of conditioning and it's funny I was um just prior to this I was on the radio the local radio talking about Stoptober and Sober October and yesterday one of the things that they asked me was you know um what happens if you fail and I said exactly that that like we put so much pressure on ourselves to be perfect and have a clear run at this and it just be amazing. But what if you don't know things? For example, what if you don't know a new way of coping with a new situation like stress? What if you haven't got that tool available? Actually, what you need to see then is, well, I've slipped up and I've drank again or I've, or I've done whatever again. I've eaten the wrong food again. Whatever it is you've slipped up against, what what was that? What what made yeah. me do that and how can I respond better next time? And don't beat yourself up. That doesn't help in any way. Just figure out what went wrong and how you can make it better next time and go again and go again. And loads of build up of going again eventually turns into that continued period of success. Yeah, yeah, ex exactly that. And and knowing what your, I guess, what your triggers are, whether it's, you know, I, I found out that... Uh, Weirdly, I found out like going to a funeral was like, you know, um, twice in a row was was a, a time that I kind of slipped up. And not I was that like, weird, you know, though. not that weird. No, at all, is it? no. When you because it's highly emotional and uh, those those emotions lead to to kind of stress and, and, and all of that sort of thing. So, yeah, it's 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 been a, a huge learning curve. But the, the upside is just crazy. Uh, the Yeah. So can we get God, so, that's what I was discussing. Yeah, can we get to that moment? Um so you've you've And when to... I want to know when it was. When did it when did it go? <laughs> this is it as well. Go on. Well, that's it. That's where we're getting to, but more long than drawn out, I suppose. I would just I would just get into you. <laughs> right, I'm doing it wrong. Because I think when I watched that video, I really felt it and I want you to say it in your own words, really, like this moment. Come on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um I think in in terms of, you know, after I'd had that conversation with with my wife, it 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 it, it just started a chain of events. So ne next day, I said, right, I'm gonna I'm gonna start exercising. That's that's you know I I, I you know and I'm gonna try and 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 not drink, um, and I'm gonna you know really try on the on the painkillers. I th I thought about we we kind of discussed getting professional help. We discussed um work and, and and leaving work but what we decided is look let's try first of all and see if we can if we can make headway um ourselves and um i i started listening to books 
So um, I listened to Annie Grace, um, This Naked Mind. Catherine Gray was a was another really good book. Uh, uh, another guy called Rich Roll that really inspired me. And kind of learning from all these people really started to open up my eyes to the impact alcohol had actually had on me. And with that, I started to build an exercise routine. I talked about, you know, so often we fail because we try and bite off way too much in the first instance. Um, and that exercise routine literally started with a five minute walk on day one, six minute walk, seven minute walk, 10 minute walk. And I just kept ticking things off like green boxes. So whether Can it I was- just ask you, Simon? I'm so yeah. sorry. At, yeah. at this point, did you have a goal in mind? Like, was you there going, right, I'm going to do an Ironman? Or was it simply to just to stop drinking, to stop the painkillers and kind of get your life back in order? Yeah, I didn't have the Ironman target at that stage. Right. Um, I, uh, I suppose I, I had a target, which was to get my life in order and- yeah be a better dad that that has always kind of stuck in my in my head um so yeah so things like drink free days I, I use the apps on that to, I in my calendar in my inbox I've still got it even now I put in um as if it's a meeting don't drink today I put my exercise that I'm going to do um and then I turn them green if I've achieved them the following day and that just gives me a nice sense of, a, of of achievement and, and accountability and the the exercise thing I, I and and the way we kind of agreed it I saying I'm never going to drink again just scared the living daylights yeah. out of me so we said look what we're going to try and do is I'm only going to drink on a on a Friday and Saturday um and we 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 started that way and um very quickly, I noticed the benefits of kind of Sunday to Thursday. I felt brilliant. Yeah. I was exercising. I was thinking my stomach felt better. And then I'd drink again on a Friday and Saturday. And all of a sudden on the Sunday, I would feel terrible. I hadn't recovered from my exercise properly. And then so I started, I then realized more and more that it's kind of not having any positive uplift and so I then stopped on a Friday within four weeks I'd, I'd kind of stopped on a on a Saturday as well um and then I was really able to to kind of build momentum like my my fitness my the weight started to drop off um I started to make new friends in 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 different areas so I, I made friends with you know whether it was running whether it was um triathlon and I found these new people that I were engaging with were not, the relationship wasn't all about drinking. Uh, in fact, there was quite a few people who were on a sobriety journey, uh, a friend called Steve. Um, and so starting to make these new connections, if you like, and, and people telling me that sobriety, because I always in my head, sobriety was a place that has no color in it. So if I if I looked at it, it had no color. It was boring. It was dull. It's where um, nothing fun happens. That was this picture I had in, in my head. And as I started to explore it more and more, I realized it had a lot of color. I, I in fact, it was brighter than than uh, my my previous life. And and just going out, in, whether it's into the forest or cycling and sunsets and sunrises and 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 all of these sorts of things just I started to see so much color in in my life and I started to, to feel in my stomach and I, I don't know if it comes from my stomach and then into my brain I, I don't know what way it works but this sense of peace yeah and it it, it comes and goes in in kind of flows but there are there are times I just feel this overwhelming sense of peace and and that was a feeling I, I really started to like. And so then drinking just, uh, you know, and, and the last two and a half years, three years, I, ha I haven't even fancied it. I haven't even gone near it. Um, um, I love just, that. Yeah, just because of the benefit, just because of the benefits. And and the, the, Iron, the Iron Man thing came from surrounding myself with these new people and seeing what they were achieving. And... I thought, okay, well, I don't think I can do a full one, but I might be able to do a half. 
Um, and I've people just got to point something out, Simon. Yeah. You might not even realise this. When you your biggest sense of achievement definitely comes from you not drinking, not doing any painkillers. The fact that you've got fit, you you just go, yeah, the Iron Man thing. Like to, to the outside world, they'd be yeah. like, oh, like us, the Iron Man, the Iron Man. But actually, your inner peace isn't coming from the Iron Man at all, is it? <laughs> no, no, it, it definitely. If I if I look, I mean, just how I feel in my body. You know, when you lose that weight, yeah. just looking in the mirror every day is 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 a nicer feeling than it than it was because I was super embarrassed about the way I looked. Um, and yeah, so the Iron Man is the is the crowning. Uh, it's the cel- It was the celebration of um, doing something. Um, Simon, it was positive. to show your brother, wasn't it? It was to say, yeah. let, <laughs> let, let's not faff about it. This yeah. is for you, this was for your brother. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Um, so it was, it was, it was good, and we we uh, it was coming out of kind of COVID, so there wasn't any organised Ironmans going on at the time, and uh, I it was coming. I was really conscious it was coming up to the twenty fifth anniversary of my of my mum's passing, and so I just organised my own Ironman around the town I I live in. Um, I set it up for a charity who that that support people with addiction. Um, and the momentum around that was was really positive. Like lots of friends and family wanted to come. People ran with me. I got a message from the Ironman world champion, three time world champion Chrissy Wellington. She she sent me a a letter. She texted me on the day. Uh, I made the front of the newspaper. Um, it was really it was really cool. We raised fifteen thousand pounds. Wow, amazing! Yeah, it was it was a great. It was a tough day. I'm not going to lie. It was a, it was a tough day and it was, so it was the 25th anniversary of my mum's death. Um, and I, and I bawled, I, I drove specifically, I drove to the swim on my own and I literally cried my eyes out on the, on the way. And I, I think that was like pride coming out to saying to look, mum, we, we, we had a really sticky period there for a while. Um, but we did it. And now today I'm going to do this to to make you proud. And um, that was that was how the day unfolded. Yeah, it took 16 hours and 45 minutes. Wow. Um, and it hurt. And um, but and I had two pizzas afterwards, two full dominoes. <laughs> um, I think you allowed that after like 16 and, and a half hours. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and there was some amazing moments. You know, my son ran with me for a bit. Uh, my daughter came along for 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 a bit and. You know, I remember him saying to me the day before, because quite quite a few of the parents sponsored me of the school and, and a couple of the parents said, we'd love to run with you. And so it kind of got around school because it was mentioned in the assembly on the Friday before the before the Ironman and um, uh, the, the school kind of mentioned it. And so Noah came home on on the Friday and he said, Dad, you cannot mess this up tomorrow. And I said, why? why? He said, because they told everyone at school, you have to complete this. Um, and I was like, OK, yeah, f- fair, fair enough. Um, so, yeah, he he got into it and, and everything. And, and, it, and it's had a knock on effect on so many people. Um, I went on, did another one. And this time, four work colleagues said to me, look, we'd like to do it with you. Would you would you help us train? Wow uh two bens and a, and a joe and uh we did it uh, a year later in barcelona and they all crossed the line they all beat me i mean <laughs> you know it just shows i'm not a natural athlete maybe i'm a better trainer than an athlete <laughs> um and that was another great moment it was like wow you know i've now supported a few a few people on their on their journey and and um and and I think with the with the sobriety thing, if I go back to the, how powerful those books were and how powerful yeah. podcasts are and how powerful the community is, that's I, I think it also helps your accountability. And so, um, you know, that's why I, I like to talk about it, um, because hopefully it can just inspire. I always think if it can inspire one person, it's it's magical. What was the time limit, Simon, then, from making the decision of stopping drinking to you then successfully doing your first Ironman? Two years. Wow. Yeah. And you Two lost years. all the weight in that time as well. Yeah, I I, I was still uh, 
So I've lost, I've, I was, I was about 16 stone, or maybe 15 and a half, 16 stone. I've lost another stone and a bit since. Um, uh, but yeah, so I didn't lose the full eight and a bit by then, but uh, I, I was just a bit of a slower runner. That's like a person, uh, isn't it? Eight and a bit stones, like a small woman. It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, it's a big, it's a big chunk. I had to, the wardrobe had to get regularly updated uh, over a few months. So what yeah. an incredible achievement. You know what else I love as well is when you've said like you've gone to all these different groups, I suppose. And I think when you get sober, um, for me as well, I didn't have any other hobbies. So I literally went out to socialize like my hobbies were drinking socializing yeah. and any other words that meant that same thing <laughs> that, eating that, out. <laughs> yeah, eating like, out, yeah. that was that was literally it and I think something um we always say to our members now is like go out and do other things you'll find that there is other people that don't use drink just to have fun like meditation classes exercise classes yoga all of these different things don't revolve around alcohol. So you're going to meet people that are interested in and the same kind of things as you. Yeah. yeah. Like I work out of a small personal training studio and the two owners, neither of them drink. It's nothing to do with an alcohol problem. It's just to do with their fitness. They don't want to poison yeah. themselves, you know, like, so you do, if you change your interests, if you, you know, at least when I were talking earlier, we've both changed career we both have a completely different set of friends together, shared friends. They're not allowed to be best friends because that's our job. Yeah. <laughs> um, we have completely new hobbies. You know, I, you know, Lisa, certainly in the early days, you used meditation as a massive tool, didn't you? Yeah. 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 And I attend church because I play the organ there, play the church <laughs> yeah. organ there, which I've talked about already today. It's like your life, your world opens up, doesn't it? It doesn't have to be so closed. And actually, like you said, and I loved what you said, the colour. Oh, the I was, yeah. I got goosebumps I've, when you said that. I brought yeah. this down, right, because I want to ask you something, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I got goosebumps when you said that there was more colour in your life. I did. Yeah, I yeah. absolutely love that. And um, I was thinking, because Alex and I have been looking into doing a lot more events, and something that we've wanted to do is kind of, like you said, you did your own Ironman, so I kind of want to ask you about that later, if that's all right. Because, Stay on at the end, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I was thinking, you know, like the colour runs that you do, and they like all have pain and yeah. stuff like that. I really want to do a Be Sober one of that. And that yeah. you kind of put that in my head then, because we wanted to do like a run, um, and then I thought, oh my God, we could do like a color run and it can be about sobriety being so colorful and amazing. So yeah, what, watch this space for that, but you, yeah. we might need your Plus, help as well. <laughs> pleasure, pleasure, yeah. Simon, can be, obviously a couple of things now, I wanna know what's next for you because obviously doing two Ironman competitions and then I'm pretty sure you said you're training for more. Yeah. <laughs> um, so unless that was in the video, but anyway training for more so like what's next for you in your personal life what's next for you in your kind of sobriety I'm going to call it a career it might not be a career but your sobriety journey yeah. and what's next for you full stop you know where, where do you go from here and what are your plans yeah so um about so I, I work in hospitality um and that is a that is a tricky career in when it comes to 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 not drinking and actually um, there are so many people in hospitality that that have these struggles. Mm -hmm. And I started, I suppose, as I started to share my journey, whether it was through LinkedIn or, or um, kind of talking about it, lots of people started reaching out to me and saying, look, we've, we've, uh, I'm struggling a lot, of, a lot of maybe females tend to be more open in, in asking me, like maybe asking me direct or actually commenting on the post but the thing i found was that a, a lot of men started reaching out discreetly through messages and 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 you know asking me saying that they they had a similar problem or and that might be weight related or or alcohol related and it got me thinking that actually maybe my experience of of what's happened is is quite powerful and so i started um kind of i thought I, you know what i'll try and do a talk about it um and I reached out to an old colleague of mine, a lady called Helly, um, and I said, look, would would you entertain me coming to talk to your team about my journey? She, I knew she had a cinema in her hotel, so I thought that'd be a cool place to start. And she came back to me and she said, yes, of course you can. 
So she set it up, all of her team were there. I, I wrote this talk and I went and delivered it and it was absolutely terrible. It was, it was, it was horrific. Okay. I wanted, I wanted the <laughs> We've the been work. there, Simon, oh, we've, been, we've there. been there. I won't do them now. Alex yeah. tried again and did amazing and now she's wonderful, but I left it there. <laughs> yeah. I wanted the world to like just gobble me up. But oh, I did one so I did one clever thing, which was I filmed it. And I I hate listening to my voice or 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 watching anything back. But I sat through this and I and I watched it and I took notes and as if as if I wasn't watching Simon, just as if I was kind of critiquing it. And I learned loads from that first attempt. So I then uh, kind of posted about it on my LinkedIn. Someone else came back to me and said, oh, we'd love you to come and talk to us. So I, I then did that and I got better. I just I just got better. And 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 again, with with sobriety, your self-confidence kind of shoots. It, it, it really does. And so um, and then people said, then I got a message from one person saying, oh, would you come and do it for, for my company? How much do you charge? And I thought, oh, I'd never really thought about charging for this. But hey, this could be an upside. Um, <laughs> and and then um, an old colleague who'd gone to work for Amazon said, look, will you come and do a head office? Will you come and do the Amazon annual graduation keynote wow. speaker? I was like, OK, um, <laughs> And and you're kind of learning as you go along. I I wore the wrong color T-shirt to that, so um, <laughs> I had I was so nervous I had sweat marks. So then I learned that you must wear a black T-shirt or a dark top. Um, and so I just kept I kept learning, and that was brilliant. You know, there was 500 people at that one, and I I gave the performance of my life. Um, and just people kept coming up to me afterwards, like, oh, we want, uh, we need to know more and even, you know, and then they booked me again for, for another event. And so that I'm going to Belfast on, on Tuesday, I've just come back from Switzerland. Um, and, um, it just, it just kind of spiraled and, and, and that, that was amazing. So I do that as a, I guess, as a side gig. Um, lot, which is I just, think sober people have a lot of side gigs. They There's do, so don't they? many yeah. Side yeah, gigs loads of side gigs. On. Yeah, I'm astounded. Can I just? Yeah, I'm not. How many years has it been now? From the five. day, so within five yeah. years, you've yeah. done two Ironman competitions. You've lost eight and a half stone. You've got sober. You've got clean of painkillers, yeah. and you're an international speaker. Yes, as a yeah. side gig. As a side gig, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I well, love that. you get a, you get your time back, don't you? So yeah, yeah we were talking get, about that before. It's really boring you, at the beginning, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I just went to bed early. Um, <laughs> yeah, a lot that, of early nights. Yeah, a lot but of that has its benefits too, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that has its benefits as as well. You know. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I guess a, a, a lot of time back and and an opportunity to think and challenge yourself and. Um, I, I do all my kind of training in the morning. So, yeah, so I want to carry on doing the speaking. I, I love that. Um, from a physical point of view, um, you know, they've, they've launched a new Ironman in Leeds next year. Um, so that, that really appeals to me. Um, I also would love to swim the channel. I've, I've wow. done, I've done, uh, Portsmouth to the Isle of Wight, which was, wow. which was a, a real mission, um, so that gave me a bit of a, a flavor of, of maybe swim in the channel. And then I run a business um, with a with a partner who um, is, a, is a great guy who's who's actually um, kind of following on in, in that journey, like really prioritizing, you know, his his health and well-being as well. And we help hospitality companies um uh, independent hotels and and things. And and again, the sobriety thing, I would never have had the courage um to set up my to set up my own business and um so sobriety's given me that and and I'd like to write a book oh this is amazing uh, yeah this I've got a name for it oh go on are we, are we yeah. allowed to know yeah it's called the trend the the working title is the is the transformation effect um I love it and about how to yeah trans transform but it but it's not just about me. It's about other stories of people that I've that the ripples, I've heard isn't it? about. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The ripple effect. I think yeah. from the minute you've obviously decided to 
ditch the booze you've been an inspiration oh, yeah that, how many lives have you changed I like, know it's even just your seen... own kids you've changed the, their future by doing what you've done you have potentially changed the outcome of their adulthood oh absolutely yeah, I want to ask yeah. you something it's... Simon yes or... go for it go for it I, I want to ask about um because you've made it sound quite easy <laughs> <laughs> But surely, um, and from that video, I saw that like you decided that you were going to start training and you kind of went and asked people to help you train and then lockdown hit. So how, and I know as well that we have people listening that really, really want to do like to do an Ironman or even to just stop drinking is a dream of theirs. So how, how did you do that? And on the days when you really didn't want to do it, how did you motivate yourself to do that? Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, there's so much self self doubt and, you know, I, I, I sympathize with, with, or empathize is a bit, is a better word with, with, with people that, you know, really want to make a change. And I, and, and I think probably understanding first and foremost that, um, because alcohol, sometimes I, I, I think we probably oversimplify, it's it's alcohol but 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 the truth is it's a it's a highly addictive substance it's it's a really well cleverly marketed um substance that has found its way into every single piece of our life so so to break from it is is really really difficult and i think probably on the hard days and 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 the difficult days rather than perhaps in the past kind of saying to myself you know, why can't you just let go of this, you idiot? You know, it's not it's not that difficult. I kind of maybe looked at it in a different way and say, look, if you, this is difficult. This is really difficult. And um, actually, you're not a complete failure for, for not being able to do this because so many other people are struggling. And that's where the I guess the community aspect comes in. That so many other people are, are, are struggling. So I think that. I think anyone listening, it, 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 it's it's saying to them, you know, what you what you are trying to do here, if you are trying to to um, you know tackle your drinking, is something really challenging, and um, you should not be ashamed in any way, shape, or form of the position you've you've got yourself into because you're dealing with you know a, a big beast here um, that has that has got a lot of people. The fact that you've realised. And the fact that you're trying to do something about it is amazing. Um, and you should you should pat yourself on the back because a lot of people won't even accept that. Yeah. And I think that's how I I started to to kind of tackle the mentality. And it was the same with my with my fitness. It was kind of just this play it forward, play it forward, play it forward. You know, if you can get another session done, what does that mean? If you can go another day, what what does that mean? And I just kept playing it forward, and and that gave me a lot of um, a lot of encouragement. Um, Visualisation is a, is another thing that was was really powerful for me. Um, you know, I visualised hundreds of times, you know, getting over that line. Um, I visualised hundreds of times a, a, a better body. I I I, I use visualisation a lot. And 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 I think that's that's quite a powerful thing. And and I suppose the difficult thing about sobriety, and that's why podcasts like this and and groups like this are so important because actually they can help you visualize a better outcome. As in, at first you tend to visualize this dark place, um, and so that's it, it's definitely not easy. Um, it, it's really difficult, but I think accepting that it's that it's difficult is actually quite important I think you're right about that you know somebody said to Lisa and I last week about every when you're taking an action or taking a step or doing anything the question you should always have in mind is does this take me closer or further away from where I want to be and I think that's kind of where you're what you're saying there as well you know like I'm visualizing this so is what I'm going to do take me to this or is it going to pull me away from it it's a massive driver because motivation's only so strong it, it yeah. dies down. And I think at the beginning it's there, but if you fail, if you relapse, if you, whatever, it starts to dwindle and then it's got to be something else. It's got to be something more than motivation. 
Yeah, yeah. And and it's funny you should you should say that because actually a trap that I fell into a few times was I'd stop drinking, I'd feel a bit better, I'd start to get a bit of confidence back. And then I was like, oh, okay, I'm fine now. I can I can probably drink again. Um so um but what I wasn't realizing is that actually it was the non-drinking that was starting to have this positive impact. And and, and yeah. I think I think sobriety is also about starting to put two and two together sometimes. Yeah, you, yeah, it's you, a big learning curve. You know, it's it, it, it's a big learning curve. You know, the whole we haven't even touched on sitting with your feelings, which I've you know I finally had to kind of sit with the feelings about my mum and yeah. all of all of these sorts of sorts of things coming coming through, and and that's really difficult um, too. You find yourself driving along sometimes, and you just burst into tears randomly Absolutely, yeah and you've never had the tools you know because obviously you know as, as much as I'm sure from what you said you're close to your dad and he's been there you were missing a significant other parent and so perhaps some of the nurturing that may have happened from a mat maternal side may have been missing in those really vital teenage years and probably yeah. beforehand when she was unwell you know you've never really acquired the tools to what does grief what does dealing yeah. with grief look like from you know, a perspective where I'm not using a substance. And I think both of Lisa and I can relate to that differently. We both lost our dads, but later in life. But yeah. for that, you know, that came out in sobriety much more, didn't it, Lisa? And you yeah, stepped definitely. And... Yeah, definitely. Yeah. 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 I've, I've got another question. I'm sorry. Um... She's not letting you go, <laughs> Simon, right? She's not letting you go. <laughs> it's because, like, I can't stop thinking that you've done an Ironman. And did you say that it was like 16 hours? The first one, yeah. The first yeah, one, obviously. That That's 16 hours, right, basically, of for me, I think, putting yourself through torture, right? How many of them hours did you enjoy of doing it? And do you do it for the after feeling or do you enjoy actually doing it? Do you know what I mean? Oh, like... <laughs> Yeah, that is that is a seriously good question. Um, so I think um, I enjoy it. I I I I def I, I think I enjoy. So weirdly, going out for a run or or on the weekend or cycling or or, or any of those things is a real good head clearer for me. Um, it's a new way to deal with stress. Um, and before my my output was always uh, substance or alcohol. So it's it's the new way that I that I deal with with stress. And I often find some of my best creative thoughts or um, if I'm p tackling a particular problem that actually a, a, a run is is my mind seems to work like the matrix and all the parts kind of see fit. It. <laughs> um, and and so so I, I get that from it in, in terms of that day itself I, th I think it's a pride uh it, it's a pride thing it's a um I I definitely enjoyed it and you know it, it's hard but I think knowing that I could do something hard um has has really helped me because then other things in your life feel less hard um if if that makes any sense yeah um, it does so was there a point where Sorry, was there a point yeah. where you was like, I've had enough now? I've, oh, I've yeah, got... yeah, all the, There's all loads the time. of them, I reckon. <laughs> Do you know yeah. what? I, I've never done an Ironman, obviously, right? But I have done a marathon. And I can tell you that during that marathon, it started well. There was at least 10 or 15 occasions during it where I thought, what am I doing? Shall I stop? And then I'd come good again and then it'd go bad. And But like, you've, like you're saying, when you're talking, I'm thinking, yeah, it was like that. I can relate to it in that way. Yeah, yeah. So many, so many times I, I wanted to give up. Um, you know, you've you've done uh, an hour and a half swim. You've done a seven hour bike ride. You know, everything hurts, Grueling. Grueling. and you've got to you've got to start a, a marathon. And um, yeah, I, every, I don't even know how you've done that. A marathon. Yeah. I'm talking about one marathon. You've done all that before the marathon. Oh my word! Your stomach hurts. Your you know, there's there's lots of there's lot there's lots of moments, but I actually think getting sober is ten times harder than doing an Ironman. I I, wow. I honestly believe that. I honestly believe that if you if you can if you can go through sobriety from a place where you're not far off of rock bottom, I think there you know 
there are so many things you can achieve because the strength of character and the strength of mind to go through sobriety is is 10 times harder than than an iron man and i and i 100 percent believe that wow i think you're amazing simon i know lisa oh. you know both of us think you're incredible at what you've achieved and what you've done quick um plug for your website and where to find you on socials yeah so um on instagram at keynote mcguire um so there I, I kind of post about my keynote speaking and um sometimes do some some clips on there and and things like that but it's it's uh trying to motivate you one post at a time and then www.simonmaguire.co.uk um is where you can and my videos on there if anybody wanted to wanted yeah, to see we, it we found it on the about page and it was it's a really inspiring video so oh. definitely go and have a little look at that is there anything that we haven't asked you simon that you'd like to say no, I just I just want to say, you know, like, thank you for for having me. And I think um, I've, I've been following you for for a long time. And, you know, I know you've really upped the the community stuff a lot lately and, and starting to spread it into lots of different locations and, and, and all of that. And I just think, you know, it's it's people like you that, that give a lot of confidence to people like me um, and um you know, you've been talking about your journeys for for a long time now, and um, I just think it's really powerful. So keep up the amazing work, and thank you. Oh, thank oh, you thank so you. much. Yeah, yeah. It's... Stay on, stay on. Let's have a quick chat with you. Thanks so much, okay. Simon. No problem.